Hey guys, welcome to Competency 1. We'll begin here with Skill 1. Compare real numbers and identify their location on the number line. So what does that exactly mean? Well, what we're doing is we need to go ahead and compare different representations of numbers. And so the different representations, what involves that are radicals, absolute value, fractions, decimals, integers, powers, and percents. And of course, regular numbers as well. So to get started, we want to go ahead and first tackle radicals. All right. So radicals, we want to use estimation when we can to approximate the value of square roots. Now we have square roots, cube roots, and beyond. And I'll cover all of that here. So let's go ahead and go through this first example, because we can learn by examples here. Which two integers does the square root of 50 lie between? So to tackle this problem, we're going to need to go ahead and think about reference points. But before we do that, let me just give you a quick overview about square roots. So when we're dealing with square roots, what a square root means is what number multiplied by itself gives us the number under the square root. So more specifically, let's say we're talking about in the square root of four, that's going to be two. And the reason for that is because two squared or two times itself equals four. And that's what we're dealing with there. All right. That's what a square root is. Now, there are plenty of times where we're not going to have a perfect square to take the square root of. So, for example, this was really convenient because we had the square root of 4, right? But what if we had the square root of 5? So what we're trying to do here is instead of getting that exact answer, which we can't do that without a calculator, we want to go ahead and use a reference point to understand where that number might be. So the square root of 5, here's how we can think about that. We know that, well, I just showed us right here that the square root of four, that's two. The next number would be, and we, we're going to need to practice and know this, it's going to be nine. That's the next perfect square. And that would be three. So if we're discussing the square root of five, that's going to lie somewhere between two and three. And by looking at it, knowing that five is closer to four than it is to nine, I can, I can confidently say that the square root of 5 is somewhere around 2.1, 2.2, something like that. All right. So let's go ahead and apply that same line of thinking to the problem we have here. Which two integers does the square root of 50 lie between? And let me go ahead and change colors. All right. So square root of 50. Understanding our perfect squares, we know that 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. 4 squared 16 and on and on eventually we'll get to 7 squared being 49 and 8 squared leading us to 64 50 is between 49 and 64 right closer to 49 yes we can agree on that but nonetheless it is between 49 and 64 and so we can confidently say that the square root of 50 lies between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64 or between 7 and 8. So lies between 7 and 8. And that's what we mean there. And later on eventually in this video we'll go ahead and use that knowledge to compare numbers. So let's go ahead and move on here. More radicals. So example 2. Let's go ahead and approximate the square root of 34 to the nearest whole number. So this is a different way that we can apply our knowledge. So let's go ahead and use that same technique to begin with. Square root of 34, where might that lie between? What two perfect squares does that lie between? Well, on the left side, on the lower end, I'm thinking the square root of 25. I'm thinking square root 25. And that would certainly be five. Again, we're gonna wanna go ahead and understand these uh, basic facts on square roots. The next best perfect square would be 36, because that would be six. So we know that the square root of 34 lies between 5 and 6, but that's not what we're being asked to do. What we're being asked to do is we want to approximate this to the nearest whole number. So essentially what we want to ask ourselves is, well, what number, what perfect square is 34 closest to? And we can agree that it's much closer to 36 than it is 25. And so I can safely assume that I can approximate the square root of 34 to the nearest whole number to be six. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense there leading us forward. So let's go ahead and discuss cube roots. 
This is even more important, and this is where some of us may be a little confused. So go ahead and mark this part of the video if you need to. That way we can come back and keep revisiting it. So, cube roots just like square roots. Here's the difference. Cube roots, it's not what number multiplied by itself gives us this number. It's what number multiplied by itself three times gives us that number. All right? So we're basically saying, hey, if we're looking at two cubed, well, that would be two times two times two. So multiplied by itself three times. And two times two is four times two again, that would be eight. And so two cubed equals eight. And so on the reverse end, instead of cubing two, we could say that the cubed root of eight equals two. All right, so hopefully some light bulbs went off there. All right. So let's go ahead and apply that line of thinking to this problem, this example right here. And remember guys, we're gonna need to practice these skills. These aren't skills that we can just uh, you know, memorize for the test because there's a, such a vast variety of problems that we could see. So understanding the concept itself, I'm gonna preach this throughout these uh, bootcamp videos. Make sure you understand the concept as a whole, as opposed to memorizing a procedure. So here. The square root or the cubed root of 27 plus the square root of 36. Well, as discussed in that previous example, I hope we can tell that the square root of 36, we can replace that with 6 because that's what it is. The cubed root of 27, that's where we're going to have to do a little bit of work there. But basically, we're going to ask ourselves what number multiplied by itself three times gives us 27? Well, 1 cubed, that would be 1 times 1 times 1, and 1 times anything is itself so one times one times one is one we just saw that two cubed would be eight i hope i don't need to work that out again let's try three cubed that would be three times three times three three times three is nine nine times three is 27 oh there we go there we go so we found that the cubed root of 27 is three and the square root of 36 is six and so the answer here would be nine. And so let me pause right here just to make sure I tackle one of the misconceptions that we might see here. One of the misconceptions is thinking that cubed root means divide by three. If you did that, you'll mistakenly get nine for the cubed root of 27 and you'll add it to six and you'd get the wrong answer. You get 15. And it's not 15, it's nine. All right. So just take a second, take all that in. That way we can make sure we don't make those crucial mistakes.